Today we're going to continue with our PyQt5 examples and I'm going to show you how you can style your applications with CSS. This is the application that we left off from the last example. I have these files on GitHub if you want to grab them and follow along. And this is going to be our end goal for this tutorial. Keep in mind, I'm not the best designer, so you'll design something way better looking. This is more to show you how to create the design yourself. So let's jump right in. All right, again, we have our code here from the last example. You can grab this file if you want from our GitHub if you want to follow along. If not, you can watch as I go through these and it should work no matter what project you're kind of working on. So basically, we have a fairly simple example of an application here. So we have some labels here, an entry box, and a button. And I'm going to show you how you can style those using CSS inside of this file. So there are a lot of different examples and setups you could do here. I'm going to create one kind of CS file, CSS file, if you will, for this application. So I'm going to do that here where we created our application. I'm just going to call my style sheet, if you will, style. And I'm I'm going to use three quotes because I'm going to do a multi line string here and then I'm going to close it with three quotes. And now inside of this, I can do my CSS. Now, if you've done some CSS, this may look familiar to you. If you haven't, it may be totally new. But in CSS, we're going to give a selector that's shown here. And then we have CSS properties inside of that selector that we can define. So for example, we have an app widget up here. See, I created an app widget. So down here, I'm going to select that widget. I'm going to change the background color. And if I ran this, obviously nothing would happen because we haven't applied the style sheet yet. So this line here is going to allow us to apply our style sheet to our app. Now, if I run this, you'll see that it's changed the app background just like we expected. Now, as you can imagine, we can grab other elements inside of this as well. So let's go ahead and change all the labels to white for the color. Now, again, if you're familiar with labels, this will probably look familiar. I'm going to set the color property equal to white. So that's going to actually change the font color to white of every Q label. Notice here we selected every Q label. And you'll see every Q label, the font color was changed. Now you'll notice the font was not changed on our guest button or our entry box. That's because those aren't Q labels, so they weren't selected. So now you might ask yourself, well, what if I want to change some Q labels, but not all the Q labels? Well, you can dig even deeper with the hash symbol and actually grab out the name of the Q label you want to change. So here I wanted to add a border around our round count label and our high score label. So I selected all Q labels and then I said the hash symbol so I could dig deeper and say I just wanted the round count label. And then I did the same with the high score label. So it should be the only ones that get a border. So if you're not familiar with CSS, again, the border set up here is your first parameter is how wide you want it and what type of border I want solid. My third parameter there is the color. The border radius is going to give it a kind of rounded look and the eight pixels is how much of a rounded look I want. And the padding is the padding inside the actual label between it and the text. So now you'll notice that we only added the border to our round and our high score. And that's because we use those advanced selectors there. I'm going to paste in another section here for our Q line edit. So that's our entry box, remember, and I'm going to give it a little padding. I'm going to change the font color to white. I'm going to give the border style solid. Actually, that's redundant. I'm going to take that out. We defined it down here anyway, so I don't have to have that definition above. So I defined the border here and I used all three parameters. You could pass those in separately if you wanted, like I did above. You definitely don't have to do both ways. So my border I defined as two pixels solid and also white. The border radius, again, I used eight pixels. So if we run this again, you'll see that now we have our entry box defined as well. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here and scoot down our button as well. It's kind of overlapping, right? So you can see here we have guest button. I'm going to update our guest button's Y parameter to give it a little space. I'm going to add five more pixels onto it here. Now you can see we got a little white space there, although it's the same color, so we should get that changed so we can see it a little better. 
Now, continuing on, I'm gonna target just our push button. Now remember, you could target specific push buttons if you wanted. In our application, we only have one, so I'm just gonna target all of them since it's just that one anyways. And you can see here that I changed the color, the background, I added a border, I gave it some padding, I adjusted the border radius, the font weight, the font size, and I changed the outline to be none. Now these individual CSS selectors you can look up for yourself. None of them are, they're all pretty self-explanatory, but again, it's kind of its own beast working with CSS. And some of the best ways to work with it is to get in there and actually test it out and make it your own. So I'll let you guys go crazy with this. I'm just kind of giving you what I did. And you'll see that gave us a nice button. Now, one thing that's missing from my button that I always do with CSS, you'll notice that it doesn't have any hover effect. You're used to seeing in programs and websites when you hover over a button, it either changes colors or you can kind of tell that you're interacting with something that you can click on. And you can do that pretty easily by adding a colon and then hover. So this is gonna change the effects of whatever you wanna change when you hover over it. For example, I could be really dramatic here. I could do red, really change the color on it. And you'll see here that it gives us a hover effect. Now that's a little too dramatic for my taste. Again, not that I'm the most artistic, so I could be wrong there. So I'm gonna update the background to this color just to give it a little less abrasive version of that hover effect. And I'll also update my border color. And you can see now I just have a nice little light effect as I hover over it. And you'll see our game still works just like we expected. Now just one more thing here. I wanted to show you how to change the icon in the window as well. And I'm just gonna do that up here in the setup UI just because this is where I define my main window and I set the main window size and all that jazz. I have a Clarity Coders PNG, a really small image file in the same directory. So I'm going to pull in the main window and set window icon and I'm gonna use icon and I'm gonna pass in the path of my image. So now this image has to be in the same directory as your script file. Now you'll notice too, if you have a directory and your Git instance is the directory above, you may have to have the path of the actual file above this as well, so don't get hung up on that. So now if I run this, you won't notice a big change, but you'll see up in the left corner there, there's a tiny icon. Now you may have some questions about this menu bar as well. This is operating system based, so it's gonna look different if you're on Mac or Linux or Windows or even from version, different versions of Windows, it's gonna look different. You might have some options there of building your own kind of menu bar. That's a little out of the range of what we're doing here today. I just wanted to get you guys started with CSS and show you how you could start designing and formatting and beautifying your application. That's all for today. If you have any questions on this, leave me a comment below. If you like the video, please subscribe and like. It helps the channel and it helps us produce more videos. Thanks, and as always, keep coding.